Hey everyone! Today's tutorial is one that I've been super excited for um, and I'm just now getting to record. It's for this Lumigurumi Triceratops and this design was actually originally an Amigurumi pattern by Club Crochet who's also at Louis Loops on Instagram. He also has a Club Crochet Instagram. So I watched his original Amigurumi yarn crochet tutorial for his triceratops and I loved it and so I adapted it for crochet or for lumigurumi and this is the first my first attempt and then I fixed up the pattern a little bit and this is the second attempt so this exact design is the one that will be showing you in this tutorial so I did get permission from Louis Club Crochet uh, to film this tutorial because I had to adapt some of the stitches from Amigurumi to Lumigurumi. I also got permission from Ginger Cell because she has her own Triceratops design and it's a different design that has different legs and a different ridge and a different pattern for the body but I did get permission from her as well because she also has a Triceratops so I will link her video in the description and I'll also link the original Amigurumi club crochet tutorial in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Today I'm going to be making my triceratops in lime green and with the horns in white. I do have these, uh, these pattern cards that I wrote out that I'll be showing you every so often. Um, but actually I'm going to show you how to make the eyes and horns first, just so that we get those out of the way. And I'll put a band count in the description as well, because I don't know exactly how many, um, bands I used off the top of my head. I'll have to count that up, but I'll put that in the description box. At this point in the tutorial, I went back and looked at what I had filmed for the eyes and horns and realized that I had messed up the colors that I used. So I'm refilming it with the correct colors. So as long as you follow along in this part, everything should be good. You won't have to redo anything later on. Uh, but that's why the lighting just changed. So for the eyes, I'm just using black pony beads, but you can use safety eyes or other beads or wrapped bands if that's what you have or that's what you want to do. What it, just whatever materials you have, whatever you want. So, I've already done one eye and one horn off camera. This is the eye. Um, since I'm using pony beads, I could just thread a band uh, through the pony bead because the hole is big enough. But I'm going to show you what I do, what I would do if the hole in the bead was smaller, just so you know what technique I use. And then it works for pony beads too, but it's not necessary for pony beads. So I'm going to take a single band of my body color, whatever color I'm using. Um, let me find a good band for this. I'm finding a nice thick band. Um, so here is a p piece of fishing line, which is notoriously difficult to see on camera, but I have a piece of fishing line and I'm going to thread a band onto one end of that fishing line. And then I take both ends of the fishing line and I thread those through the hole in the bead. Again, you only really need to do this if the hole in your bead is particularly small, uh, which mine is not, but I'm just doing this so that you would know what to do if you're using beads with smaller holes. And then you just slide that bead down onto the band. So simple as that. And then remove the fishing line. So my eyes are done. And for the horns, I already did one off camera. Basically for the horns, you're going to start it as you would a magic ring with one of those little three loop cap bands, the way I do that is I take a band and I twist it and it forms that corkscrew shape 
and then I just put it on the hook. So you start this the way you would a magic ring by pulling a single band through all three loops of the cap band, reclaim, front loop under the back, and then put your hook back into all three loops of the cap band. But that's basically it for the horn. You're not going to do any more stitches in there. So I'm going to put my hook down for a second. And what I do for the horns is I thread it onto this long band, essentially. So what I did is I tied two bands together. And I'll real quick show you how I tie two bands together. So I take two bands and I'm going to overlap them. So what I did just now is I overlapped this band on the right over top of the band on the left. And what I'm going to do next is I want to grab whichever band is behind, is in the back, which for me is this band on the left, but I'm going to grab it from the front. So I'm going to reach in and grab this little inside loop like that. And when I let go, um, in doing so I let go of this other band and it's just sort of sitting here. And so now from the back, I want to reach in and grab that other band that's just sitting there. Like that. And so now that I did that, um, I just pull both ends and that forms a nice knot. So now I have this two, these two bands that are knotted together that kind of serve as a long band. So I'm going to pick up my hook that has this horn piece on it and I'm going to slide my horn onto this long band. And what I like to do is slide it so that that little knot that's tying the two bands together is in the middle. Like that. So I'm going to do one more horn on camera. I'm going to start by tying these two bands together. So again, I cross two bands like that, like a, a Venn diagram if you're familiar with that. And then whichever one is behind the other one, I'm going to grab that from the front like that. And then I grab the other one from the back and then pull. I'm going to put that down for a second. So make a three loop cap band. Put on your hook. Pull a single band through. Reclaim and then front loop under the back one. So basically a single crochet. Then reclaim the cap band. All three loops of the cap band. Make sure you get all of them. And then take that long band you prepared and slide your horn onto it. Like that. So now I have three horns because I did the one off camera and it's time to move on to the body. And just show you my little pattern card real quick. So as you can see, round one is the magic ring with four stitches in it. So you're going to start with another one of those three loop cap bands
and I'm going to put four single crochets into this cap band for my magic ring. If you've never done a magic ring before, um, I will explain how to make it, though I will say that there are people that have taught how to make magic rings better than me, so this is probably not the first Moomagurumi design you should make. Anyway, I was talking and not paying attention to what I was doing on camera. Uh, basically, I just pulled single band through the cap band, and then to single crochet, you just pull that front loop under the back. And now I'm going to put my hook back into the cap band, all three loops of the cap band. And then take my second band, pull that through all three loops of the cap band, reclaim, and then take that front loop underneath the back too. Like that. I want to put my hook back into the cap band. And pull a single band through that cap band again. Reclaim, and then single crochet. And then put the hook back into the cap band for the fourth single crochet. So now that I've done that, I should have four single crochets. One, two, three, four. That was the end of round one. So to start round two, I'm going to put my hook into the first stitch from round one. And since there are so few stitches, it might be kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Just put my hook under the first stitch from round one. Since the last time I recorded a tutorial, I got a new camera and, or a new phone. I'm using my phone to record. Um, and it's not as good. So, it's kind of having issues focusing. But then again, my when I used to use the iPad, sometimes it had trouble focusing too. Alright. So, for round two, the pattern is single crochet and increase around. We're going to end with six stitches. So, in the first stitch... It should just be a single crochet. So pull the single band under that stitch and then single crochet. Now I want to put my hook into the next stitch. And this one's an increase, so I'm going to put two bands through that one stitch. So I'm going to start with a single crochet, but now instead of going to the next stitch, I want to put my hook back into that same stitch. Like that. And then do another single crochet. So two single crochets in one stitch is an increase. Now I want to put my hook here into the next stitch. I can't just say here. I have to verbally explain what I'm doing. And a single crochet in that one. And then I'm going to put my hook in the next stitch, which is the last stitch from round one, and do an increase. So 
So at the end of that run, I should have six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that looks good. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a C clip. It's a stitch marker, as it does not focus. Let me just add the C clip real quick. Because I know a lot of people use stitch markers, but it makes it easier. Alright, so on to round three. And round three is increase a round, and we're going to end with 12 stitches at the end of this round. So, by putting my hook in the first stitch of round two, I can begin just grabbing some bands over here. Okay, so I'm going to do an increase in every single stitch. Go back in. So for this first part of the Triceratops, if you know single crochets and increases, you should be fine. It's not until round six, I believe, that you start doing anything weird. If any of you know of any good editing programs other than iMovie, I would love to know because iMovie works well, but that's only for Apple devices and I don't have an iPhone or anything. Um, do have the iPad, but it's actually, it's my parents' iPad. I don't actually know if it still works. Alright, so this one with the C-clip was that last stitch from the previous round, so you're going to do the increase in that one. So I should have 12 stitches by now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that looks good. So I'm going to remove the... maybe. <laughs> remove the C-clip, and then move the C-clip up this band. Technical difficulties. Anyway, um, there we go. But yeah, I haven't found a good editing software yet, so if you know of a good one, let me know in the comments below. So I just did round three, and it's time for round four, which is a single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, crochet, <laughs> single crochet, and then increase around. So three single crochets and then an increase all the way around and you end with 15 at the end of this round. So I'm going to put my, oops, that, I don't know if that was on camera. I'm going to put my hook into the first stitch. And just do a normal single crochet. There's one. Now, hook into the next stitch. Single crochet. Two. Next. That's not what I wanted to do. The next stitch. Single crochet. Three. And this fourth stitch is going to be that increase. Sorry about that, the video cut off um, in the middle, which seems to be a recurring problem. But I thought that I told my phone to save videos to the SD card, and apparently it didn't do that. So, 
The last thing I said was to do an increase in the fourth stitch. I haven't done that increase yet, so I'm about to do that increase right now. This is the first increase of my pattern. I didn't do anything off camera. So there I did one stitch, and then put the hook back into that same stitch, and here's the second. All right, so now to repeat that pattern, three single crochets and an increase. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Uh, the fourth one is not a single crochet. Well, you do a single crochet and then you do a second single crochet. So, there is the increase, and then repeat that pattern one more time for this round. One, next stitch, two, three, and then an increase in that last one. And that last one's the one with the C-clip. If you are using a stitch marker, I'm just not used to using stitch markers. Anyway, so I did one stitch in there. There's the second. So if I did this correctly, I should have 15 stitches. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Perfect. So I'm going to move the C clip or stitch marker up to, oops, <laughs> dropping it up to the band on my hook. And now I can move on to round five. So, as you can see, round five is single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then increase. So four single crochets and then an increase, and you do that around. You're going to end up with 18 at the end of this round. So there's one. Two. Three, four, the fifth stitch is going to be an increase. Or I guess a better way to say that is in the fifth stitch, I'm going to put an increase. There's the first part of the increase, and then the second part. So there is an increase. And then I put my hook into the next stitch. One, two, three, four, and then if the one is going to be an increase, and go into the next stitch. Four, 
that brings me to the C clip, which is on the last band from the previous round. So I'm going to do an increase here. So there's one and two. The C clip is getting stuck there. <laughs> oh, what, where did that just go? <laughs> There. Okay, so there should be 18, and I'm going to count just to be certain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect. So now it's time to move on to the fun round. Round 6. So round 6... You're going to start with six normal single crochets, and you're going to do a single crochet in the back loop only. And this is part that I had to adjust from the amigurumi to the lumigurumi. Um, just partially because with, um, with amigurumi, it's like reverse of lumigurumi. So if I was doing amigurumi, the back side of these stitches would be facing out. But with lumigurumi, this side faces out. And because of that, the way we do the front loop only versus back loop only is different. Anyway, I'm going to show you everything. So after that back loop only single crochet, we start this pattern that ends up creating the crest or like the ridge thing for the triceratops. So and that pattern is a half double crochet and then a chain with three single crochets on it. You repeat that five times, and then the last stitch is a single crochet and a back loop only. So you're going to end up with 18 stitches, kind of, but it's, it's this weird pattern because it came from an amigurumi pattern. I think it's really cool. So I'm going to stay on camera for this whole thing. I mean, I have to stay on camera for the whole thing to show you how to do it. Um, but I will step you through everything. So... Hopefully it's not too difficult. So the first six stitches are just single crochets like we've been doing through both loops of the stitch. Nothing unusual there. All right, so one, go into the next stitch, two, next stitch, three, four, five, six. All right, so after you've done those six single crochets is where it gets a little weird. So with Lumigurumi, the back loop is the one on the outside. So my next stitch is going to be a single crochet in the back loop only. So I'm going to take my hook and instead of putting the hook through the full stitch like that, you don't want to do that. That's what we have been doing. But you're going to put your hook through just that back loop. And then you want to single crochet through that back loop. Like that. So that wasn't too bad. But the next part of it is where we start our pattern. So the pattern is a half double crochet followed by chain one with three single crochets in it. Repeat that. Oh, and that's all in the back loop only. So for the first part of that pattern, I want to put my hook into the back loop only of the next stitch. And now we're going to do something called a half double crochet, which is a crochet term, uh, but it's done a bit differently with loom bands. I learned how to do this by watching a video by Isalicious Designs, and she did a really good job of explaining it, so I'm going to link that in the description box as well, because it might be helpful to watch her video in addition 
uh, because she definitely knows what she's doing. <laughs> but I will do my best to explain. So to do a half double crochet, you're gonna need two bands. You're gonna take your first band through that back loop only, but then you're going to remove your hook. So right now I just have that band sort of sitting in the back loop only. But what I want to do is I want to put my hook through the front side of the back part of that loop. So basically I want to take this hook and put it through here. Like that. Now that I've done that, be careful not to pull this band out all the way. Now that I've done that, I want to put the hook through the front side of this front loop. So I'm going to take this band, I'm trying to figure out how to do this so that you can see it. Take this band and fold it up. Ooh, still can't see that. Like that. So it was like this, and you take it and you just push it, fold it up. Now you want your hook to go through that front part. Like that. And again, Is Delicious Designs does go into detail with how to do this. Um, and so if you're having difficulty with this, you can watch her video as well. So after doing that, that creates this little, where's the camera? There. It creates this little twist in that band. So now you're going to take your second band, pull it through both loops, and then as though it were a single crochet, you want the front loop under the back too. Like that. So that was a half double crochet. And then for the next part of this pattern, I want to put my hook into the back loop only of the next stitch. Like that. For this part of the pattern, I'm going to chain one and then do three single crochets in that. I will definitely show you what I mean by that. So to chain one, pull a band through and reclaim like normal, but instead of single crocheting now, I'm going to take my next band and pull it through just those front two loops, like that. But now, take the front loop through the back two, like that. So basically I chained one and then I did one single crochet in there, so I need to do two more. So instead of putting my hook into the next back loop only, I want to put my hook back into that chain like that, and now I'm going to do a single crochet through that chain. So pull through, single crochet, and then do that one more time. Make sure my thumb is not in the way. So put the hook in the chain, single crochet. So that was the entire pattern. It's a half double crochet, and then chain one with three single crochets, and it, my thumb is in the way again. Half double crochet, chain one, three single crochets. And you want to do that four more times. I will stay on camera, on camera all four times. So, back loop only. Now we're restarting that pattern. Put my hook in that back loop only, and this is where we do the half double crochet. So to do the half double crochet, pull a band through, but then let go of it. Make sure that it stays in that back loop only, but it's not on my hook anymore. So now I want to put my hook through the back part of that band, like that. Now I want to get this front part of the band and put the hook back through the front part of the band but you want to make sure it's through this part of the band. So what's sitting there, it looks like that. And you can sort of flip it up with your finger. 
and you want your hook to go through that part of it. Now I'm going to take my second band through both of those two, single crochet, or I guess it's not a single crochet, but you treat it like a single crochet at that point. So that was a half double crochet. Those two bands together made up the half double crochet. Put your hook into the back loop only of the next stitch. And now it's time to chain one, like that, and then do three single crochets in there. So there's one, and then instead of going back into any of these single crochets, you want to put your hook back into the chain, and then do a single crochet in it, and then put your hook back into the chain. Make sure you're getting both loops of that chain and single crochet. So that was the second time through that pattern. This is what it looks like from the outside and from the inside. So then put your hook, to restart the pattern, put your hook into the back loop only of that next stitch. Time for the half double crochet. So don't reclaim it. I just reclaimed it. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so pull band through and then release it and then you want your hook to go through the back half of that band and now you want your hook to go through the front half of that band. And it creates that little twist. So then a band through and then go into the next stitch, back loop only, and now is when you do your one chain, chain one, and then three single crochets. So chain one, single crochet, and I'm going to put my hook back into that chain, single crochet, back into the chain, single crochet, and then that was the third time through that pattern. Oops just yeah anyway put your hook through the back loop only of the next stitch to restart the pattern so for the half double my ring fingers in the way this time oh my goodness for this one for the half double crochet you pull band through but then remove your hook from that band maybe there we go. And now I want to put my hook through the back part of that band. Like that. And then through the front part. But you want to make sure it has that twist in it. So you have to go through basically the front part of the front part. Like that. And pull a band through. Crochet. And then into the next back loop only. Chain one. One. Two. And three. So that was the fourth time through the pattern. And then the fifth and final time through the pattern, pull your hook through the uh, back loop only. Pull a band through that back loop only and then release it off the hook entirely. Now I want to put my hook through the back loop like that. And then with my thumb, I just pressed up that band and I want to put my hook through there. So it created that little twist. And then pull a band through two. 
the two loops and then single crochet basically and then put your hook through the back loop only of the next stitch chain one single crochet one in there put your hook back in the chain single crochet a second band put your hook back in the chain and single crochet a third band after you've done that you can put or you have to you've reached this band with the C clip um, and you want to put your hook into the back loop only of that band with the C clip back loop only um, but this time you've already completed that pattern five times so you already have this crest or ridge thing to the triceratops so for this last one you're going to be doing a single crochet but just make sure it's through the back loop all right so that was the sixth round I'm going to move this C clip up and we can move on to round seven now round seven is significantly easier than round six basically the rest of this design is pretty simple there is a new stitch in here, but I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. So for round 7, you do 6 single crochets, and then 12 single crochets in the front loop only. That should say single crochet. It just says front loop only times 12, but you'll do single crochets there. So you start with your 6 single crochets. So where we left off at row 6, round 6, I just single crocheted a band in the back loop only so now I'm going to put my hook into the next stitch and now just do six more single crochets so one let me see if I can get this to focus any better I don't know that might be a a tad better. Two. Three. Four. five, six, and for the rest of these I'm going to be single crocheting in the front loop only from round five. So that is a little different, but it's not too difficult. So instead of putting my hook into this stitch, which was the next stitch from round six, the one that I'm pointing to. Instead of putting my hook in that, I want to put my hook in the front loop only from the round before that. So if you look on the inside of your dinosaur at the previous round, right here, right above my fingernail is the first stitch where I did a back loop only on the previous round. So you can see that that front loop is still there, is still accessible. So you see there's a normal stitch here by my fingernail and then the next one over there's a front loop that's exposed. So you want to put your hook in that front loop like that and you want to do your single crochet there. And 
now that you've started your front loop only single crochets, the rest are pretty easy because you can see where that front loop is. So you put your hook into that next front loop. And then you put your hook into the next front loop, single crochet, and basically you keep doing that for the rest of these front loops. So technically you are single crocheting into the front loops from round 5 instead of round 6 because round six was when we made the crest, or the ridge. I'm not really sure what it's technically called. I'm gonna try Ceratops, but it's the, the spiny part, for <laughs> lack of a better word. So as you can see, or as you would be able to see if it wasn't as blurry as it is, I'm just putting these single crochets into the front loop only. Why is the camera quality so terrible? Oh my goodness. knocking over the camera here. I always like a, a good real life moment on camera. Because I'm definitely not one of those tutorial makers that can make a, a seamless tutorial with without refilming anything or you know having the camera fall over or something like that. All right, that was the last front loop. So as you can see where my hook is right now, I just did a single crochet into that front loop. And the next one over was not like the front loop. I lied, there is one more. There. <laughs> So now there should be 18 stitches around, starting with this one on the hook, um, and I'm not counting this one that the C-clip is on because the C-clip was on the last band of the previous round. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then there's that C-clip there. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to put my hook to the first stitch of that round seven that we just completed, which is the stitch directly after the stitch marker. It's not the one that the stitch marker is in, it's the one directly after that. And at this point I can put my hook through both loops, not just the front loop. So round Eight is when we introduce that new stitch. So round eight will be a single crochet and a bobble stitch, then two single crochets, a bobble stitch, and then 13 single crochets. So you end up with 18 stitches at the end of that round. Now I can move the C clip. Alright, so to start round 8, I'm going to be doing a normal single crochet through that band, through both loops. Wow, 
like that. Now to do the bobble stitch. So a bobble stitch is an actual crochet stitch, but I didn't find any videos for how to do it in Lumigurumi, so I played around with some different ways to create it, what would look like the Amigurumi or crochet bobble stitch, and I'm going to show you the best way that I came up with. So to make a bobble, bobble stitch, um, you're going to need nine bands just to do the one stitch. And yes, I do know that's a lot for one stitch, but you'll see how it works out. So to start this bobble stitch, you want to take one band, basically chain one. Uh, I guess it's not. Don't pull it through the furthest band on the hook. Just pull it through those first two loops through that one stitch like that. Now I'm going to take a second band through the first two loops and I'm going to slip knot just that one band. So I'm ignoring this back band and I'm just taking the front loop under the second loop like that. So now what I want to do is I want to put my hook back into the original stitch. So not back into the chain, but back into the original stitch. Like that. Just dropped a band. So basically I'm going to do that same thing again. Three more times actually. So pull one band through just that stitch. Ignoring these back two bands now. And then pull a band through those two loops. And now take that front loop under the second. Or take the second one over the first. Like that. And now I have three loops on the hook as you can see. And now I want to put my hook back into that original chain. Or the original single crochet, not this chain that I added. So now I'm going to do that two more times. I'll pull a band through just those first two loops, so just that single crochet, and then the second band through the first two loops and then slip knot just those two front loops. So take the front most loop under the second. Now there are four bands on my hook and now I'm going to put my hook back into that original single crochet again. The band through just that single crochet. A band through just that chain, slip knot just that band. Now there are five bands on my hook. And at this point, I want to do a slip stitch. So at this point, I take my next band, pull it through all five bands on the hook, and then reclaim, and then slip knot that. But don't slip knot it tightly because this will become your next stitch for this round. Like that. So that whole technique was a bobble stitch. And it will, um, it might look messy right now, but it will uh, neaten itself up as you continue working. And basically the reason we did a bobble stitch there is because that forms the leg or one of the feet. So the next part of this round is to do two single crochets, the next two stitches. So I'm going to the next stitch and putting my hook through that next stitch. 
And I'm just going to do a single crochet here. A normal single crochet. And then put my hook into the next one after that. And do a single crochet there as well. The next stitch is another bobble stitch. So I put my hook through the next single crochet. But then to do the bobble stitch, we're going to do that same thing that we just did for this other foot over here. So pull a band through that single crochet, pull a second band through that band I just chained, and then slip knot just that band, like that. Now there are two bands on my hook, and I put my hook back into that original single crochet. Pull a band through just that single crochet, a band through just that chain, and then slip knot. Now there are three bands on my hook. Put the hook back into the single crochet. Pull a band through, pull a second band through, and then slip knot just that band. There are now four bands on my hook. And then put my hook back into the single crochet, pull a band through, pull a second band through, slip knot. Now there are five bands on my hook. Sort of waiting for it to focus. If it's going to. And now I'm going to do a slip stitch. Like that. This phone camera is really having trouble focusing. Before this, I tried filming this tutorial using my brother's camera. Um, and it didn't work as well because the camera kept running out of space. Which I guess my phone is doing too, but I'm able to edit them together. Um, but with the my brother's camera, I thought it would be better, but it focuses really well for a really precise location and if you move out of that precise location at all then it's blurry um out of focus anyway at this point we're going to do 13 more single crochet and that will get me back to my c clip So if you've been following my channel for a while, um, you'll know that my last tutorial was over two years ago, and the reason that I haven't had tutorials since then has partially been because I've spent a lot of time these past two years at college, and I don't have somewhere to film at college. Um, another reason is because I just never really got a good tutorial set up down. Because I would have trouble with knowing which device to use. Like, should I use an actual camera versus the iPad versus my phone? In the meantime, my old phone stopped working. And so I got a new phone. Um, so it's just been... I guess a process of experimentation as to what works and what doesn't. Um, also in regards to tripods, right now I have my phone propped up against something but my phone's not actually on a tripod. But I actually just got a phone tripod that's really low quality because I got it from an arcade uh, but I haven't gotten a chance to use it for any filming yet 
so maybe I'll use that in the future. Anyway, I have, after this single crochet, I will have reached the C-clip. And that C-clip was the last stitch from the previous round, so I am going to put a single crochet in there. And now I'm going to make sure I have 18 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then that half of the stitch, the slip stitch from the bobble stitch, so I'm not going to count that. So 15, 16, 17, the same deal where that little half stitch, it's actually about the same size of the one next to it, but that's a little half stitch that was part of the slip stitch, so I'm not going to count that, and then 18. Alright, so now I can move that C-clip. And now it's time to add the eyes and horns before we get any farther. Um, so what I did with these is I just figured out where to place them. And so of course for your triceratops, you can, if you want, just put your eyes and your horns wherever you think looks best. But if you're like me and you like a precise location for them, you can follow along for the next few minutes and place them in the same places where I end up placing mine. So I'm going to start with the horns. Oh my goodness, I need to stop doing that. <laughs> I've done it twice now. I'm going to start with the horns. And I want my first horn basically to be in line with this middle bump of the... That was not the middle. I want it to be in line with the middle, with the third bump of this ridge thing. So I'm going to locate that third one, and then going down from there, locate the magic ring, and then find the first stitch in that magic ring, or I guess it's not first, but the centermost stitch in that magic ring. And then from the inside I'm going to Pull my hook in from the inside and I want it coming out of that stitch. I'm not on camera. Okay. So once I've done that, my hook is sticking out of that stitch. And that's where I want one end of my horn to come out of. And what I did with these triceratopses is I have this little line part. So not the cap band, but the little line part on the bottom. And I'm going to do that with mine today as well. So I'm going to take this horn band and find where that line is, where that little stitch is. So right there. So when I'm holding it this way, I can tell that that should be the bottom. And I'm going to take the end of the band that's associated with the bottom of that horn and pull it through. I'm trying to see if I'm getting this caught on anything else on the inside, which I am. All right, so just pull that through. You can, my knot just came all the way through. Anyway, if that happens, just make sure that the 
body color band doesn't come all the way out of the triceratops horn. All right, so now one end of my horn is in the triceratops. And let's see, where do I want the other end of it? I think I want the other end of it coming out of that or going into that hole. So from the inside, I'm going to stick my hook through that hole. And then put the other end of that band through the hole. All right, I like how that looks. So now on the inside, you have these two ends of that long band. And I'm just going to tie them in a knot. as well as I can. And this is the technique that Craft Muse uses, or used, I guess. She hasn't made a tutorial in years. Um, and her tutorials were really clear, so really miss her uh, contributions to the loom community. Anyway, so I just did a knot there, and then when I turn this back to the right side, you can see that now I have one little horn. So for the second horn, I'm trying to figure out where I want that one. Again, I'm going to orient it so that that little stitch, that little line is on the bottom. I feel like it just makes a cleaner finish that way. So what I want to do next, and again, you can put your horns wherever you want, but where I'm gonna put mine, I'm gonna put one end through that hole. So the way I determined that, I located this fourth if you're counting from the left, one, two, three, four, the fourth ridge, and then go into the stitch that's like just below that. So from the inside, I'm going to poke my hook through that hole and I'm going to put the top part of the horn band through here. So now I have the top part of that band on my hook. I'm going to just pull it through like that and let's see I'm going to put the other end through in between those two stitches which was my increase those two were my increase Again, if this is confusing, you can just put your horns where it looks good. So I stuck my hook through that hole from the inside. And then I'm pulling that band through like that. I'm just going to mess with it so that it looks the way I want it to. And then you turn it inside out, find those two ends, and tie them in a knot. I almost knocked over the camera again. I probably will by the end of this. Okay, there's a knot and I just double knotted it on the inside. So when I turn it to the other side, there's the second little horn. For the third one, I'm going to put it on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate that second ridge. 
and then find the stitch below it is right here that's where the top loop of my next horn is going to go through so again i stuck my hook through that hole that i want from the inside now i'm going to find which part of this horn i want to be the top and i want the line to be on the bottom so this part's the top i'm going to grab that top band Pull it through and try not to get it caught on anything else. So and then the other part of this band will go in the hole below that. Let's see. There's that hole. I think I'm going to put it through that hole. Let me see if I like that. I think that's good. So now I'm going to go on to the inside again, find those two, and knot them together. I can see the horn peeking through on the inside, so I'm going to have to pull that back out from the outside. There we go. Alright, now for the eyes. Again, you can put them where you like. I like putting them around below where I put those two upper horns. I'm looking at my other dinosaur right now to see what I did. Okay, so for the left eye, I'm going to take this one eye, or the, I guess, the left from when you're looking at it. And I'm going to put the two ends of that band there and there. So if you have safety eyes, you can just find a spot to put them. Since I'm using beads, it's a little bit more involved. So I'm going to put them through that hole. One end through that hole. Be careful that your bead doesn't come off of the band when you do this. Alright, so one end is through that hole and now from the inside I want to poke my hook through where I'm going to put the other end of that band. And I'm going to put the other end of the band through this hole. Pull through and so from the inside I now have both ends of that band on my hook and to ensure that it, the eye doesn't pop back out I'm going to take a neon green band slide it through and then just slip knot it you can slip knot it pretty tightly because you don't want it coming undone. Or you could like put a C clip on that band if you wanted. Anyway, so there's one of my eyes. I'm going to do the other eye. And then we can move on to rounds 9 and 10. Let me look at where I put the eyes on this peach triceratops. Okay, I'm 
It looks like on the peach triceratops I put the eye band directly under where that horn band ended and then one to the right. So I'm going to try to do that again. So from the inside I'm going to poke my hook through. That's where one end of the eye band is going to go. And again, be careful that your band your bead doesn't come off the van entirely. Okay, just making sure. And then I'm going to stick my hook into the hole next to that, which you probably did not see because it probably was not on camera. All right, so now that I've done that, I turn it inside out. That band, both ends are on my hook. So I'm gonna pull a band through and secure it, uh, slip knot it, which secures those ends. So that's what it looks like right now. I am not loving the look of that because one, I is like horizontal and the other is vertical. I want them both to be vertical. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this right eye. Actually that might have fixed it. That did not fix it. I'm going to fix this right eye, I'm going to move that part of it up to this hole, and then I'm going to charge my phone because I just got a notification that the battery is running low, and I will be back to finish this design after that. So I will see you soon. For you, it will be just a few seconds. I fixed the eyes. I think that looks much better. How cute is that? I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. It's looking more lime green than neon green on camera, but that's okay. So, the next two rounds are single crochets around. So I'll show you how to do round nine and then round 10 is just single crochets around. So I'm going to go off camera for that because this tutorial is already super long. Um, but I'll stay on camera for round nine. So um, the only part you're just going to do a single crochet in the first stitch. The only part of this that might be a little bit difficult for this round is because we did those slip stitches, those bobble stitches on the previous round. So as you can see, it looks like this little stitch is my next stitch, but that's actually the half stitch from the slip stitch, which you can see if you look at it from this angle. So I'm going to skip that little half stitch because that's not actually a stitch, that's just part of the slip stitch. And I'm going to put my hook through the next one. So I'm waiting for it to focus. So I'm going to put my hook into here because that's the true stitch. So this is my second single crochet. And then the next single crochet is simple, there's nothing weird about that, and the one after that, the fourth one, is simple as well. But then the fifth one is going to encounter that same little issue where what looks like the next stitch is actually the half of the slip stitch. You can't really see from this angle this time. 
but just make sure that you skip that half stitch that's not a true stitch and instead put your hook through the other part of the slip stitch. So that was my fifth single crochet. I'm going to keep doing single crochets all the way around and since there were no more bobble stitch in this round uh, in the previous round, no more bobble stitches. I can just, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about any of those pesky slip stitches. This band looks awfully thin. I'm going to put that aside. Do you ever get those packages of rubber bands that just seem to have an awful lot of, like, really thin rubber bands? I wouldn't say that this package of neon green was like that, because it could have been a lot worse. But I have found more, like, really thin rubber bands in this package than usual, I would say. Like, it's not really bad, but it's enough that I've noticed. The downside of those bands is that if they're too thin, they snap easier which is obviously never something that's desirable when you're making things like Loomagroomy or bracelets. Anything really, you don't want your rubber band snapping. Unless maybe it's a band you were going to cut anyway. But there are no bands that you want to cut in this design. <laughs> Right, I'm almost to that C-clip, just two more stitches. So there should still be 18 at the end of this round. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. Uh, let me recount that. Okay, that is 18. I just miscounted the first time. So there are still 18 stitches in this round. That was round 9. And round 10 is also all single crochets. Um, and I'm going to go off camera for round 18. Or, not 18, round 10. Round 10, you don't have to deal with any slip stitches, so it's just normal single crochets all the way around in normal single crochets. So I will come back after I've completed round 10. I finished round 10 off camera, and now it's time to move on to round 11. So I think I'm going to stay on camera for the rest of this tutorial. Round 11 is simple, it's just 17 single crochets in a bobble stitch. It worked out that way just to get the leg in the right place. So I have my C-clip on the last band of round 10, and I already put my hook into the first stitch of round 10 so that I can start single crocheting. I feel like I should be talking about something instead of just being silent as I finish up this tutorial.
But basically after this round, there are just five more rounds. And then we're done. And most of those rounds, or at least a couple of them, are primarily decreases. So that's not, it doesn't take very many bands or very much time for that. I'm sort of liking this C-clip stitch marker thing because I don't have to count every single band because I lose count too easily. I've never used a stitch marker before, I don't think. Or I guess I technically have because I've used bands as stitch markers before. Like I'll slip knot a band onto the last band of the round in like a different color so that I can keep track. But I've never used a C-clip. Okay, so the C-clip is on that last band of the previous round. So once I reach there, I know that I'm ready for the bobble stitch. So I'm actually going to remove that C-clip just so that it's not in the way. So this last stitch here is going to be a bobble stitch. And if you recall how to do a bobble stitch from when we did it earlier, it's just the same thing. So a band through that stitch, a second band through that first band, and then slip knot it, but just slip knot that one band, and put your hook back into the original chain. Band through, second band through, slip knot. Now there are three bands on the hook, and then put the hook back in the original chain and chain one, basically. I guess chain one is probably the wrong technical term. And then hook back in band through, second band through, and the slip knot, just that first band, those first two loops. And so what you end up with after that is five loops on your hook. And you're going to take one last band, pull it through them all, and slip knot that. And that creates your slip stitch. And that's also the end of round uh, 11. I'm going to put the C clip back on. Round 12 is a single crochet, a single crochet, a bobble stitch, and then finish it off with 15. And then round 13 after that is single crochet around. So for round 12, you start that off with the two single crochets. There is one. Now there. There's two. Now it's time to do the bobble stitch. So a band through that stitch from the previous round. And then a second band through that first band. Back loop over the front. Now there are two pan bands. I think I said pans. I meant to say bands. Two bands on the hook. Put the hook back through the stitch. One. Then two. Then slip knot. And there are three bands on the hook. Put the hook back and the chain, pull one through, or when I said chain, I meant the single crochet. It's like discoloration on that band. I'm going to remove it.
So this is my third little repetition of that. And put the hook back in the single crochet. Band through, second band through, slip knot it. Now there are five. And now I want to take one more band through all five of these and slip knot it. Make sure it's a loose slip knot and that forms the slip stitch. So there was the bobble stitch. And for the rest of this round, it's just single crochets. Um, and for time's sake, for this tutorial, um, I'm going to go off camera for this round, for the rest of this round. To finish off this round, you're just doing single crochets. Back to uh, that bobble stitch. And just keep in mind that this right here, if you can see see it. Keep in mind that that right there is part of the slip stitch, that little half stitch right before the c-clip, so don't put anything in there. I'll come back for the next round. I'm just going off camera for the rest of this round because the tutorial is so super long and uh, I don't want to bore you guys any longer. <laughs> I've done 14 of those 15 single crochets, but I actually decided to finish this round on camera just because the last stitch is that in that bobble stitch. So as I mentioned before, that little half stitch right there is not actually a stitch, so I'm not going to put my hook through that, but I am going to put my hook through this band or the part of the band that the C-clip is on. And just do a single crochet in there and that finishes out round 12. And for round 13 it's I believe single crochet around. Yeah, that's right according to my pattern card. Which should be pretty simple but um, I do have to be mindful of that one bobble stitch which ended with the slip stitch in there. So one, oops, I went through more than just the stitch I was supposed to go through. Two, and then the third one in this round is that bobble stitch. And as you can see there are two little half stitches that belong to that s slip stitch. You're going to skip the first half stitch and go in through the next half stitch, which is the true stitch. So that's the third single crochet. Now both bobble stitches are out of the way, so it's just normal single crochets and normal uh, stitches for the rest of this round. After this round, we can start decreasing, and then it's pretty quick to finish from there. Am I even on camera? Probably not. I'm sorry about that. 
three more single crochets. One. Oops. Two. And three. Okay. So my last one was in that stitch that had the C-clip on it. Why did I just do that? I probably shouldn't have taken my hook out because then it starts to unravel. Okay. So round 14 is single crochet, then decrease around, and we're going to end with 12 at the end. Um, so I'm actually going to be doing invisible decreases. You can do whatever type of decrease you'd like. Let me just put my hook in that next stitch. Um, whatever method of decreasing you'd like. So I did a single crochet in the first stitch. For the second, I'm going to do an invisible decrease. Now, if you want to do a normal decrease, that's fine. But to do an invisible decrease, I'm going to put my hook into both loops of that next stitch. And then I'm going to take the stitch after that and put both loops on my hook as well. Like that. So now I'm going to take one band and pull it through the first four loops on my hook, like that. And then reclaim and slide that front through the back too. So that just creates what I think is a cleaner decrease. It combined those two stitches into one. So now I'm gonna put my hook into the next one and single crochet. And then the one after that is going to be another decrease. So I guess the two after that. So again, if you don't want to do an invisible decrease, you can decrease another method. But I'm going to do an invisible decrease. I'm going to put that whole next stitch on my hook. And then the whole next stitch after that on my hook. And then uh, band through both of those two stitches. Then front through the back two. I hook through the next single crochet. And then an invisible decrease for the next two, one, I think I'm going to run out of bands before I finish this. I don't think this video is rotated correctly. You know what, I'll deal with that later. If it makes the tutorial look weird. Wow, I'm too far into to redo everything. I'm also filming this late at night, so when I'm done with this, I am going to go to bed. Okay. So we're nearing the end of this round. I definitely need more green bands. Like, I have the package next to me, I just did, didn't get the bands out. 
the last decrease includes that band with the C-clip on it. After this, I should have 12 bands on my hook. One, two, three, well not on the hook, in this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let me move the C clip. And after round 14, I'm going to stuff this guy. So I'm not going to stuff it all the way because after round 15, I'm going to stuff it a little bit more. And he doesn't take a ton of stuffing. But still, I'm always surprised by how much stuffing some small Lumigurumi projects take. Because the stuffing can condense a lot. It really doesn't take that much stuffing though. That was almost too much. It's really dependent on how squishy you want your Lumigurumi to be. Um, I'm going to say that's enough for now. I might put in a little, well, I'm definitely going to put in a little more after round 15. After that, where is my C club? There it is. <laughs> it's like it disappeared. Okay, so I have my hook back into that band. Um, and let me get more green bands out. There. Shouldn't run out. Maybe. Well, yeah, that's definitely going to be enough. All right, so on to my last instruction card. So round 15 is a decrease, then a single crochet, and a single crochet, and then four decreases. So at the end of that round, there will be seven stitches. So the first one is a decrease. And again, I'm going to be doing an invisible decrease. So I'm going to put my hook into that next stitch and then put my hook into the next stitch after that. And take a, I almost said take a C clip through here. Take a band through all four loops. Then there you go, that's the decrease. And then put your hook into the next stitch. I'm getting off to the right side of the screen again. And single crochet. And then put your hook into the next stitch after that. And single crochet. And then the last four stitches are all decreases. So I put my hook through the next two band through both of them, decrease. Ah, the band only went through one band instead of both. Decrease. There should be two more decreases now. There and I'm trying not to catch the stuffing as well. Oh my goodness. Okay. Did 
the C clip, since it's the end, I'm just going to take the C clip off. Because it gets kind of difficult working with the C clip um, right here when it's really small. Then, so that last, the last two are going to come together to form an invisible decrease or a regular decrease if you so choose. So I'm going to count to make sure I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I do. So at this point, I'm going to stuff him a little bit more, just a tiny bit, because that hole right there is pretty tiny. I really hope the orientation of this video turns out all right. Because I think that when I started this last segment, the camera might have like rotated or something. I'm going to put the C-clip back on just so I can take my hook out. Okay, the C-clip is back on. I'm... Um, I'm going to stuff just a little bit more stuffing. My C clip just went inside again. Ah, uh, there we go. I think that's a good consistency. Probably wasn't the right word to use, but you get what I mean. So I'll put my hook back in that band, remove the C-clip. I'm going to start a new section before finishing it off, just so I can finish in one before my phone decides that it doesn't have enough space again. <laughs> Round 16 is a decrease, a single crochet, a decrease, and then two single crochets, which will end up with five. And then after that, um, I'll show you how I end it. So everything's really tight right here at the end because there are only seven stitches and the hole's really tiny. So just be careful that you don't miss a stitch. So first do a decrease. Again, I'm doing an invisible decrease. Decrease. Then in the next stitch, do a normal single crochet. Then another decrease. Uh. And now two single crochets. We are almost done. So one, and then in the next stitch, two. Okay. So that was round, what was it? Round 16. I'm going to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, is that five or six? Well, that was six, but that means my pattern card is wrong. Which I guess, I don't know. Anyway, I'll update the pattern card after this. So to end it, put your hook in the next stitch, and do a single crochet like that. And now I want to find a spot 
across the round from this to put my hook into. So I'm just going to find, just grab that band. And what I meant on my card by add a tying off band is to take one more band and pull it through everything on the hook and then slip knot it. And it can be a pretty tight slip knot because we're not really going to be tucking in this tail very much. You tuck it in a little bit, but this guy is supposed to sort of have a tail at the end. So now I'm going to hide that band. So I just stuck my hook into a part towards the bottom. Then pull it in to hide that band. This tail turned out pointier than my other one. So if you want, you can adjust the shape. Oops up some stuffing. Didn't mean to do that. Anyway, I don't want to push the tail on entirely, but I do want it to be less pointy. I think that's good. Yeah. All right, so that is finally the end of the tutorial. And if you have made it this far, congratulations, honestly. Um, and thank you for sticking with me. Because when I started to make this tutorial, I was expecting it to be like an hour. And that would have been a long tutorial. I definitely did not expect it to be two. So I'm sorry that it ended up being so long. Um, I definitely ran into some technological problems along the way and had to refilm different times. Uh, I even, I even refilmed parts that, like, I didn't mention that I was refilming it while I was filming it, but, like, I started filming this tutorial on a different camera with a different tripod, and it just didn't work. Um, the coloring, the lighting is weird right now, and I don't know why. Um, I just, I am not, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to beat up on myself, but I am not natural at this, and I would need a lot of practice at this. So this also was my first Lumigurumi tutorial, so... There is definitely room for improvement. I don't know if I'm going to make other Lumigurumi tutorials, but we'll see. So, I hope that you were able to make a Lumigurumi Triceratops from this video. I'm definitely going to be posting a picture of this little guy on Instagram. Um, and speaking of Instagram, I do have one more note card to show you guys. For Instagram tags, because if you do make the Lumigurumi Triceratops using this pattern, I would love to see it on Instagram. The original Amigurumi pattern is by um, Louie from at club.crochet, and he has another Instagram account, which is at Louie's Loops. So go follow both of those if you're interested in his patterns. He does amazing crochet patterns, and... I've been able to, this is the only one that I've, Amigurumi pattern that I've turned into Lumigurumi so far, but I definitely have considered it with some of his other patterns, and I've considered learning how to crochet to do some of his other patterns. So definitely follow him, especially if you're into Amigurumi, and my Instagram is at crazyforcats19, and I'm sorry for the very long tutorial, thanks for bearing with me. If you have any constructive criticism, I am open to constructive criticism because I really do want to 
be helpful and be able to improve. So if you know how, if you have specifics for how you think I could improve, I'm definitely open to that. Thanks for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.